Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about air mattresses, and we'd like to thank Paula Lassiter for liking and sharing the podcast. And we also got a couple new five-star ratings on Apple Podcasts. No one left a name, but we really appreciate it. It helps with our rankings. One of the first air mattresses was marketed in the late 1800s by the Pneumatic Mattress and Cushion Company. And it was made out of rubber, very similar to a modern mattress. Mm. And these were popular for early steamships on the Atlantic Ocean, so they could be deflated and stored between trips and also used as additional life rafts. <laughs> <laughs> An early ad for a home model read, Nothing so rare as resting on air. <laughs> and if you want a bed that actually seems to rest on air, you got to check out the Magnetic Floating Bed. It's a bed that has built-in magnets, and it's held in place with four wires that are anchored to the floor so that it doesn't crash into the ceiling. <laughs> it says that it should last for over 1,000 years, and it will support over 1,300 pounds. So why would you want this? <laughs> the technology is going to lead to space-age development. Mm. Guess how much it costs? I have no idea. million dollars. <laughs> Again, why would you want this? <laughs> For this episode, we're going to talk about the features of an air mattress that you would inflate and deflate when you need a temporary bed, not the permanent air beds like Select Comfort. You know that Select Comfort is now called Sleep Number? No. <laughs> so air mattresses are great to have if you're going camping or as a temporary bed if you have house guests. Mm -hmm. The small mattresses, they can be blown up, but most are going to use either a foot pump or some type of electric pump. And you can also get specialty mattresses that will fit into the bed of a pickup truck, your car, or an SUV. Hmm. If you're shopping for an airbed for your home, the most common sizes are twin, full, and queen. A twin is going to be around 38 inches by 75 inches, a full 54 inches to 75 inches, and a queen around 60 inches by 80 inches but this is going to vary by manufacturer. And a couple reviewers said that the mattresses they purchased were actually smaller than the traditional sizes. Hmm. So you should probably check the description for the measurements, not just by the term. Right, exactly. Do they make kings? A couple of companies do make king, but these are the three most common that you'll see in retail stores. Okay. And when you're thinking about the size, bigger is generally better. So if you have the room and you're thinking that two people might share the mattress, a queen is going to be more comfortable and it's going to carry more weight. Mm -hmm. You also want to compare the height of the mattresses. There are low profile models around 8 inches high and these low profile mattresses are good for camping. It's going to fit into a tent better. Mm -hmm. The high or double high styles are usually around 19 inches to 25 inches and wow. this, is, this is a good size for an air mattress in your home for guests. Mm -hmm. So the higher size it's going to be easier to get in and out of but with the higher mattresses you need a you need a special sheet really it's usually called a deep pocket for 15 inch and then you're going to need extra deep for 16 to 22 inch <laughs> so a standard mattress is only 7 to 14 inches thick and then with some of these mattresses you have just a big rectangular shape so you're mm -hmm. going to need these special sheets some of them, though, have a seam in the center, so it almost looks like a mattress sitting on top of a box spring, and that style so will what, actually... you're going to pretend? Well, well, it'll accept a smaller sheet. Oh, okay. But, yeah, you can pretend. <laughs> there are a variety of different plastics and composites that air mattresses are made out of, and if you have concerns about PVC and phthalates or vinyls that contain petroleum-based chemicals... You can look for the eco-friendly label, so it's ECO, or the PVC-free label. What concerns? And so they put phthalates into plastic to soften it, but there's been some scientific evidence that it could be dangerous for children. It's a hormone disruptor, potentially. Okay. So they're taking it out of kids' toys. Hmm. So you probably don't want to sleep on it. Yeah, if you have children, it, it may be a concern. So TPU is another chemical, and this is thermoplastic polyurethane. It's a higher grade material. It's very strong and durable. There's very little or no odor. It has a higher price, but there's no phthalates or PVC in it. And then urethane plastic is softer than PVC, but it's considered a little more durable, but it's a little more expensive than PVC. 
But PVC is going to be the most common material, very affordable, it's waterproof, and easy to clean. Hmm. Many styles will have a flocked top or sides. What? It, so flocking is like a texture or fuzzy material. So it makes it a little softer, and it's also going to help keep the sheets from sliding around. Mm-hmm. Some of the camping blogs I read said that they really like the thick flocking, so you don't need a sheet when you're sleeping on this in a tent. Hmm. And the flocking is also going to help protect the mattress from abrasion. Some mattresses come with a pillow top or a foam top hmm. for extra comfort. When you're comparing mattresses, look for puncture-resistant or extra reinforcements for more durability. But if they actually have a gauge, how thick it is, Mm -hmm. or a thickness comparison, that's actually a better guide for the durability. Hmm. A repair kit for the mattress is good to have. Some mattresses will come with one, and if not, find out what type of patch is needed for your material and the steps to use it. So if you have a PVC flock style, for example, and are out camping, Mm -hmm. you're going to need sandpaper to remove the flocking around any leak. And then on some, you need to clean the surface with nail polish remover before Mm -hmm. you patch it. So it's nice to have the repair kit and any products with you. Well, you should probably read the instructions. Right. (laughs) It's always good to read the manual. (laughs) When you're shopping, compare the weight limits. Will the mattress be used for one or two people? 300 to 600 pound weight limits are common, but it can be higher or lower. Hmm. And if you're using the mattress for camping, compare the weight of it and if it comes with a storage bag. The storage bags are also good for mattresses in your home because a few of the blogs I read said it's very tough to get that mattress back in the original box. <laughs> you can also get plastic storage containers rather than a bag, and that way you can kind of fold the so mattress. Like, tote? Yeah, like hard plastic totes with a locking lid. That way you can fold up the mattress loosely. You can put any parts or the pump in with it, Mm -hmm. and it's going to help protect it from getting punctured. Most manufacturers recommend to store it in an area that's 50 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, but check your manual. My sister has an air mattress, Uh so when she comes to visit, she brings it with her. That's fine. That's convenient. Mm -hmm. Well, it comes with a nice bag. The pump fits in it. Right, so so you don't lose all the parts. Right. Well, there's not that many parts, (laughs) J.C., Two things. How big is it? A queen. Oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she probably had it seven, eight years now. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's nice. When you're shopping, you're going to see models with coils or eye beams inside the mattress for extra support. And the coils or the beams help hold the shape and add to the comfort. Hmm. The larger the number of coils or supports, the more comfortable it's going to be. And this is material that goes from the top to the bottom inside the mattress. And it's either going to be circular shaped or long panels of this, and it creates a framework, hmm. so it so it keeps it from moving around. If it didn't have some type of support, it would kind of roll around like just a big balloon <laughs> when you change position. Edge support or reinforced corners and edges help maintain the shape and make it easier to get in and out of. Some are designed with a lip around the bottom to create suction on smooth surfaces, hmm. and that's going to help lock it in place. Cool. Small air mattresses can be pumped up with a foot pump, and this is popular for camping. Pumps that use electric from your car or are battery operated can be a lot easier and faster, especially Mm -hmm. for a big mattress. There are handheld electric pumps that can be plugged into the wall outlet and pumps that are built into the side of the mattress. Hmm. The built-in pumps are going to fill the mattress very fast. Most only take about four minutes, and then you have nothing to misplace. Some are going to have an on-off button to fill it. Some have remote control. And then the built-in dual pumps, this is going to give you a main pump to fill the air bed, and then it controls the firmness settings. So usually you're going to have firm, medium, and soft. And then there's going to be a sensor inside the bed, and that second pump is going to automatically maintain the pressure if it slowly deflates at all. Hmm. So most are very quiet, so it's not going to disturb you while you sleep. <laughs> and some of these automatic pumps are called never flat. Okay. If you have a mattress with a built-in pump that you plan on leaving plugged in all the time, don't cover that power cord with carpet or an area rug or anything. So it needs to be exposed to the air to cool. Hmm. When you're comparing models, if you see a double square icon, so it's a square and a little square inside of it, this is a double insulated cord to protect against shocks without using a ground wire. So you only have two prongs, you don't have a grounding plug, Mm -hmm. and this has double layers of insulation and reinforcement on any of the parts that have live current, and it's going to protect you against shocks. Nice. I read the manuals on a few models, and they all said not to use it as a permanent mattress. Hmm. 
Mm. So I spoke to a rep from Coleman and Arrow, and they recommended only a couple of weeks at a time fully inflated and using it every night. Mm. And then a couple of the pros were recommending not to use an air mattress for more than a month or so as a full-time bed if you have guests. And if you do plan on using it for guests that are sleeping for a long period of time, let's say at your house, they say deflate it slightly every day and then inflate it every evening, Hmm. and it's going to be less wear and tear on it. Interesting. Air mattresses are going to stretch when they're new. Some need to be inflated and deflated a couple of times when you first use them, so check your manual. And then some to to condition the material. Hmm. So some stretch more than others depending on the material and the support system inside. A couple of companies recommend inflating your mattress to the preferred firmness about an hour or two before you sleep, then top it off just before you sleep if you don't have an automatic pump. How would you know what firmness you wanted it? You test it, you'd go, you know, like Goldilocks. If it seems like your mattress is deflating too much, you can always check the seams and around the pump with a small amount of liquid soap mixed with water, put it into a spray bottle, and then spray the areas. If there's a leak, it'll blow bubbles. But you don't want to use laundry detergent or dishwashing detergent because most of them don't create that bubbling effect Hmm. to show a leak. It's pretty wild. You can also use a leak detection solution, and you would normally use this for like a gas leak, and it's going to detect very small leaks. One of the top rated is OATY, it's O-A-T-E-Y, their all-purpose leak detector, and you can use this for gas or air, it's non-toxic, and then if you have this around the house, you can use it for other projects. What other projects? So if you're connecting the gas lines, let's say to a gas water heater, or if you're replacing the flexible gas connector on a gas stove, you always, anything you're doing with any, so you any project, three times? <laughs> well, any projects that you're working with gas and connecting, you want to make sure that there's no leak. <laughs> Never allow infants to sleep on an air mattress. They can suffocate if they get wedged between the indentations of the material or if the bed is underinflated. Hmm. The Consumer Product Safety Commission recommends not to allow children under 15 months to sleep on an inflatable air mattress. You want to keep your air mattress away from walls or furniture to prevent punctures or abrasion. And then when you're shopping, compare the warranties. 90-day, 1-year, and 2-year are very common. Hmm. For extra sleeping areas when you're camping, there are air beds made for cars and trucks. So the car styles are L-shaped, and it extends into that area where your feet go in the back seat. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to give you an area the width of that whole back area. And a lot of the reviewers said that this is great if you're traveling with pets. Oh, interesting. And then some truck mattresses are shaped to fit in between the wheel wells of specific models. Hmm. Does anybody else use the term airbed or did you just make it up? Airbeds also known as air mattresses. (laughs) I ran to a couple of retailers to see what types of air mattresses they carry. So this is in the Chicago area. I went to Lowe's Mm -hmm. and they don't have air mattresses. Really? And then in the mattress episode, I talked about going to Bed Bath & Beyond to do some mattress research. Yeah, how'd you do there? They didn't have mattresses. But they do have air mattresses, (laughs) and they carry AeroBed, so it's A-E-R-O-B-E-D in our area. And they had a model with a remote control for the firmness, a pillow top layer, a built-in pump, and it says it has a whoosh valve to deflate. It also had a USB plug so you could charge your devices while you're in the bed, so I thought that was pretty cool. It said it has an antimicrobial coating, and their queen is 24 inches tall, so it's easy to get in and out of. No, nice. I stopped into Kohl's. Why? They don't have air mattresses. (laughs) Dick's Sporting Goods has Intex, I-N-T-E-X. One model for the home had interior beams with a special fiber, And they say it's designed not to stretch as much as traditional fibers, so you're going to get much more support. It had a built-in pump, a flock top and sides, and a bag for storage. And the style I looked at was 22 inches high. Hmm. A camping model was 10 inches high with beam construction and a flock top. And it used a battery pump that took six C batteries. Hmm. What uses C batteries? Yeah, yeah, interesting. Huh? <laughs> so there was an Intex pump with rechargeable battery, and it can be plugged into a wall outlet or a 12-volt car socket, and this can be used for blowing up mattresses in your house or camping. <laughs> I went to Mattress Firm, and they didn't carry air mattresses, and the salesman really seemed mad that that's a mattress that I was looking for. <laughs> 
Target has Coleman, Embark, it's E-M-B-A-R-K, and Serta. And the Embark and the Coleman, they were indoor or outdoor rated. Their Serta model had a built-in pump that automatically inflates to keep it at four different firmness settings. Hmm. It had a suede top and a storage bag, and it was 15 inches high. Interesting. Some top-rated companies, Intex, I-N-T-E-X, Coleman, Sound Asleep, Instabed, Serta, S-E-R-T-A, Aerobed, A-E-R-O, Bed, and then Alps, A-L-P-S, and they have a lot of highly rated camping mattresses. Hmm. Do you have anything else to add? When you're shopping, think about what you're going to be using it for. Is it just going to be in the house or camping or both? You want to get the biggest bed that's going to support the most weight for your use. For guests, a built-in pump with a second pump that keeps it automatically filled is going to be the most comfortable. Hmm. Have a patch kit, and then keep your receipt and warranty in case you get a leak. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, iHeartRadio, and CastBox. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com, and you can follow Cindy on Twitter at Fixit Co-host. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next week.